We've completed the parachute removal, power cutoff and checks on the returner, which is in a good condition now. The camouflage coating for the returner is mainly of the functions to protect the surface of the returner, prevent bumps and squeezing and make it look better. We've just finished coating the returner's side and front end. When it's hoisted by the crane, we will put on a coat on its bottom part. Later on, we will lift the returner to the parking bracket on the truck, fasten it and transport it. Well, for more on this, Samir Jabagosh joins us live now from Washington, D.C., works at the NASA Mars Exploration Rover mission. Samir first of all, thank you very much for your time. Why are scientists so excited about these samples from the far side of the moon? So, so there are two ways of looking at it. The near-term scientific discovery and the longer-term change that is happening. So I'll tell you about why the um, longer-term change is so significant. So um, you're seeing that there's an increasing dis um, um, activity towards the moon. The NASA has its Artemis mission, Starship. They are making, SpaceX is making the largest ever launch vehicle. Um, Jeff Bezos, um, Blue Origins, is trying to do a lunar base. So now you see China is going very, very strong towards the moon. So how strong? So this is not today. This happened more than 10 years ago. This is the sixth mission. This is Chang'e, uh, Chang'e 6, but there was Chang'e 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Five brought samples from the near side of the moon. Um, so so not, Ch China has been building capability, and next they want to send humans to the moon. And same, NASA wants to send humans to the moon through the Artemis program. Um, Jeff Bezos wants to have humans live on the moon. So all this activity that you're seeing on the space station for the last 20 years is going to go to the moon. People are going to stay on lunar bases. Okay, the near term, what is the scientific discovery? So we don't see the far side of the moon. And what is significant here is that this is near the south pole of the moon, which has some water or water ice. So now, can we, can humans use this water ice if they were to go to the moon? So that is the billion dollar question. So it will be the difference between humans going there feasibly in a um, normal, I mean, reasonable cost or not going. Uh, imagine if you had to go for a very long distance and carry all the water versus if you were able to extract this water from the moon. So it's bringing, I don't know whether it's bringing near near the South Pole, but it's at least bringing, the, bringing some samples to the far side. So there will be more scientific discovery, maybe some more information about whether water can be um, um, treated and extracted uh, from from the lunar south pole. So scientists understandably very excited about these samples, but as we discussed yeah. there, China's the only country to have landed on the far side of the moon so far. Why is it so challenging to get there? So, you know, you don't see, you don't have a direct line of communication, so you need a couple of satellites around. So I would say it is difficult, but it is not as difficult as, say, landing humans on the moon. So it's perhaps being... So, so NASA did this in the 60s and 70s, right? So, so the big problem is that you, there's no line of sight, so you need to... Um, when you communicate, you need another transition point, which is the same thing. When you communi communicate with Mars, you also need a transition satellite because a Mars rover may be facing the other side of the solar system and not Earth. So, so it, is, it is difficult, but you know, it is not as difficult as launching and landing humans on the moon, which is probably, I would say, maybe 100 times more difficult. Amitabha, absolutely fascinating speaking to you. Thank you very much for your time, Amitabha Ghosh, live there from Washington, D.C.